Welcome to Learning Engineering Mechanics, LEM. I'm Dr. Avinash Karat, and today in front of me is Ravi Raj in the learning seat. Ravi Raj, I'll briefly tell you what are the rules for this particular learning of engineering mechanics. You'll be posed some problem. Once the problem is posed to you, I'll read out that particular problem. You'll be given four options. These four options, after the four options, you'll have to select one option, which is correct. For that, I'll be giving you two and a half minutes. In that, you'll have to have to select the correct option. If your option is correct, that's fine. If your option is not correct, you'll have to explain why the option you have selected is not correct. Our main task is to get into what we call it as a learning mode, <coughs> wherein you'll be able to learn by solving problem on your own. Normally what happens is, in teaching learning process, unless and until you involve yourself thoroughly in the teaching learning process, then only you can address the problems which are there in the field. So, should we start? Yes. The first problem. Two forces, 2M and 4M, act at a point on a body. The resultant, when they act at, is 60 degrees. Is, what is the result? 10 square root of 10, the first option. Square root of 6, the second option. Square root of 28, the third option. Square root of 8, the fourth option. Your time is already started. So, <clears throat> I think uh, to solve this problem, we have to go for the theorem called as law of parabolic theorem, which says the resultant of any force is given by the formula root of p square plus q square plus 2pq cos of theta. In this particular problem, p is nothing but 2 newton, q is nothing but 4 newton, and theta is nothing but 60 degree. When you substitute all these values in this particular formula, the answer comes out to be. So 2 square plus 4 square plus 2 into 2 into 4 into cos 60, that will give you cos 60 is nothing but half, so it will become the root of 28. So, so your answer is 28? C is the answer, I think. Okay, you just taken about a minute and a half. Yes. Sir. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Very sure? Yes, sir. So whether we should consider that root of 28 is the correct answer, that's option C? Yes, sir. Perfect? Definitely. Okay, so we'll consider that to be root of 28 <coughs> as per Raviraj. And lo, his answer is perfectly right. <laughs> Very fine. Good, Raviraj. Can we go on to the next question? Yes, sir. Okay, the next question is, two equal forces act on a body. The square of the resultant is three times the product of forces. Then the angle between them is, the first option is 90 degrees. The second option is 120 degrees. The third option is 60 degrees. And the fourth option is 100 degrees. So time start has already started. Uh, the two forces acting on a body. So to explain that, I think I have to consider two forces which are having same magnitude. Let's say F and F are the two forces. And uh, according to your question, they are said that the resultant is nothing but three times the product of the forces. So R is equal to 3F that I have taken. Now, when you calculate the resultant by law of parallelogram, the formula is already with you, p square plus q square plus 2 pq cos theta, again, and we have to calculate what is the value of theta, right? When you substitute p is equal to f and q is equal to f, and r is equal to nothing but 3f, according to your framing of your question, so 3f is nothing but resultant of the force, according to your question. When you substitute all the values, the theta, which is the uh, cos inverse of the remaining term, so cos inverse of 1, the final answer will be 90 degrees. So, I think the option number 1, that is 90 degrees, is the correct answer. Option number 1, 90 degrees. Yes. Are you sure about that? Yes, sir. Definitely? Yes. 
I'm a bit confused because there is some mistake you might have done in the calculations. Can you give a second thought? So already you have another 15, 20 seconds in. 20 seconds in. No, sir. The two equal forces act on the body. Hmm. The square of the resultant is three times the product of forces. So I have taken R is equal to 3. Okay. And the, the resultant is given by log paragraph P square plus Q square plus 2 PQ cos theta. There is no problem in question. So uh, no problem in uh, the uh, values of the answers. So F we are substituted as P, Q as substituted as F again. And when you substitute all the values, the answer comes out to be 90. So I but think it is correct. Still, I have, I have some doubt. Can you explain? You just have a little time. No, sir. I think 90 degrees is the correct answer. Okay. I'm sorry, Raviraj. Your answer is not correct. The correct answer is option C, 60 degrees. Oh. Now, in the learning process, uh, you have to go back and think as to why your answer is wrong. So, I think I have to go back to the question again. I'll give you some time. Yes, sir. You rethink about it and you tell me why it is 60 degrees. Okay, sir. So the question says two equal forces act on a body. Mm -hmm. The square of the resultant is three times the product of the forces. Correct. Now I think I committed a big mistake that the three times the product of forces. Okay. I have taken the uh, only one force. It is considered to be product of forces. So I think two second force I have to take. Mm -hmm. So finally R becomes 3F square. Okay. Not 3F. Oh. I have taken it as 3F. Okay, okay. It should be 3F square. It's a product of the forces. The product of two forces. Okay. So when you substitute 3F square, uh -huh. when you substitute all the values of P and Q as F and F, uh -huh. the theta, I think it comes out to be cos inverse of half. Uh -huh. And therefore, the answer is 60 degrees. That is, cos inverse of half is nothing but theta is equal to 60 degrees. So answer is 60 degrees i think according okay. to me. but that is the option which i already given you that it's the correct option yes sir. so now you have realized the mistake that when thinking of a particular problem at that time proper reading of the problem is necessary yes sir. secondly if you have time you have to recollect that particular problem and check whether you have answered it correctly or not yes sir. if you do that you are bound to get a correct answer Anyway, we go down to the next problem. Yes. If two forces, each of magnitude F, act at right angles, their effect may be neutralized by a third force P. The value of P is, the first option, square root 2 F, square root of F, square root 3 F, or square root of 5 F. The time has already started. You have spent 30 seconds. The already. two forces, uh, each of magnitude F, acting at right angles. So we have to take the two forces which are acting at right angle to each other. Right. So uh, let's consider first force to be F, second force to be F again. Okay. The two equal forces, they are said. Hmm. So uh, the, this, the, the angle between them is nothing but 90 degrees. Okay. And the question frame is like this. They are asked, what is the resultant of these two forces? Right. So resultant is given by again law of parallelogram. Mm -hmm. The resultant is nothing but the uh, action which is produced by these two forces. Okay. So it is the diagonal of your uh, parallelogram. The formula is again R is equal to root of P square plus Q square plus 2PQ cos of theta. When you substitute theta is equal to 90 degrees. When you substitute P is equal to F. Again, Q is equal to F. PQ, again, F and F. The resultant comes out to be. When F square plus F square plus 2 F square cos 90. And as you know, cos 90 is equal to 0. So this term will cancel out to 0. So 2 F square, root of 2 F square. So, uh, uh, when we are taking the root of F square is nothing but F. And the square root of 2, that is nothing but 
2 raised to half. So I think the first option, okay. that is square root of 2 multiplied by f, is the correct answer. Are you sure? Definitely, sir. 100%. 100%? Yes. This time you have not made a mistake? No, sir. Huh? Sure? Yes, sir. Definite? Yes, sir. Should we consider it to be the perfect answer? Yes, sir. You, don't, you won't have to repeat it again? No, sir. Huh? It is quite simple. It's very simple? Yes, sir. Okay. So we'll consider option A as the answer which is given by Raviraj. And lo, the answer is perfectly right. You're yes. perfectly right. Yes, sir. So we, today we have discussed something related to three, three problems which we had seen. And uh, Raviraj has been very kind enough to explain what force system is there, how it is manipulated. Maybe in uh, next uh, thing, we will discuss more problems related to parallelogram of force and uh, related to the activity which uh, we are trying to carry on. Basically, in this process, what we are trying to do is the learning activity which is there. This learning activity, we want the student to get himself involved think in different different patterns and once you have the thinking done in the proper manner then you can solve any type of problems only when your fundamentals are clear so for that you will have to say get to know through the textbooks or maybe through lectures as to what the basic principles are there of forces or maybe resultant of forces and all these concepts if you have the things are clear then these problems which are there you can solve within no time and engineering mechanics is such a field wherein whatever your day to day problems are there those could be resolved in a different manner so there are various forces which are acting on not only the physical part but also in the uh, material and non-material world and if you are able to resolve these forces properly then there is an amicable solution and things remain in the steady state and there is not much of disturbance if the forces are not in proper manner then there's toppling of many things and uh, maybe there's imbalance or instability in that particular structure. So thank you Raviraj for today's uh, episode and maybe we'll learn more. Yes. Thank you.